Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the fourth session of the chapter Motions of the Earth. In this session, we are going to analyze the effects of the revolution of Earth. In this session, we are going to try and achieve the following objectives develop awareness about the effects of revolution of earth develop understanding about apparent migration of sun develop understanding about the cycle of seasons compare the position of earth during different seasons before we begin our exploration about the effects of revolution of earth let us look at some of the common misconceptions that exist regarding the same some people believe that all the places on earth experience similar cycle of seasons some of us think that seasons are caused because the earth is closer to the sun during summer while it is farther in winter some people believe that seasons are caused only due to the earth's revolution well all these are misconceptions let us look at the real facts since the earth is rotating and revolving on an inclined axis there are great variations experienced on earth due to this due to the inclined axis the following effects are seen on earth apparent migration of sun variation in the length of day and night the cycle of seasons let us look at each one of these apparent migration of sun you must have noticed that the sun rises and sets from different points in the sky during the summer and winter in the northern hemisphere the position of the sun goes on shifting on the horizon every day towards the south till december then it seems to begin its journey northwards the sun's highest position at noon in the sky also varies when a part of the earth is tilted towards the sun the sun appears higher in the sky than when it is tilted away from the sun if you observe the picture carefully you would notice that there are three positions of sunrise shown during march and september the overhead sun is on equator after march the sun migrates towards the north it moves till the tropic of cancer and stops there june is the month when the sun is overhead on tropic of cancer after june sun starts migrating back to the equator and reaches the equator in september After September the sun continues to migrate southwards and reaches tropic of capricorn in the month of December it stops at tropic of capricorn for a day and then starts moving back to the equator and reaches the equator again in March this cycle continues it appears to us that the sun is migrating in the sky but the fact is that the sun is not moving we are moving around the sun on an inclined axis which is making all these changes varying length of day and night as discussed earlier the variation in the length of days and nights on the earth surface 
is due to the inclined axis. The circle of illumination is not always coinciding with the longitudes. In fact, this happens only for small time during a year. This happens only when the overhead sun is on the equator and neither of the hemisphere is tilted towards or away from the sun. Rest of the times, the circle of illumination does not coincide with the longitude. As you can see in the diagram, the northern hemisphere seems to be tilted towards the sun while the southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. The circle of illumination is not coinciding with the longitudes in this position. The length of days and nights is always the same at places on the equator throughout the year. It increases or decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles. On 21st March and 23rd September, the sun shines directly over the equator and all places experience days and nights of equal duration. These are the times when neither the northern hemisphere nor the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. On 22nd March to 20th June, the length of the day increases in the northern hemisphere and is always more than 12 hours. The situation is opposite in the southern hemisphere where the length of the day decreases and the length of the night increases. On 21st June, the sun is directly overhead on the Tropic of Cancer. As you can notice in the diagram, all places in the northern hemisphere experience long days. In fact, on 21st June, all places in the northern hemisphere experience longest day of the year. Even more interesting fact is that the places beyond the Arctic Circle experience 24 hours of daylight. On the other hand, the places in the southern hemisphere experience the shortest day and the longest night. Places beyond the Antarctic Circle experience 24 hours of darkness. The condition does not last very long. After 21st June, the length of days in the northern hemisphere start decreasing but remain longer than the nights till 22nd December. Whereas, the length of nights start getting shorter in southern hemisphere but remain longer than days. On 23rd of September, the days and nights become of equal duration. This is the time when the sun is overhead on equator again. From 24th September to 21st December, the days start becoming shorter than the night in the northern hemisphere. As you can see in the diagram, the days are shorter than the nights. Whereas the days start becoming longer than the nights in the southern hemisphere. On 22nd December, the sun is directly overhead on the Tropic of Capricorn. As you can notice in the diagram, all places in the southern hemisphere experience long days. In fact, on 22nd December, all places in the southern hemisphere experience longest day of the year. Even more interesting fact is that the places beyond the Antarctic Circle experience 24 hours of daylight. On the other hand, places beyond the Arctic Circle experience 24 hours of darkness. After 22nd December, the length of days in the Southern Hemisphere start decreasing but remain longer than the nights till 20th March. Whereas the length of nights start getting shorter in Southern Hemisphere but remain longer than days. 
on 21st march the days and nights become of equal duration this is the time when the sun is overhead on equator again the cycle of seasons since the earth is revolving around the sun on inclined axis every place on the earth experience change of season throughout the year the number of seasons experienced by any place depends on its latitudinal location place on the equator and on the poles experience almost the same season throughout the year places in the temperate region experience cycle of four seasons in a year let us understand these seasons and their causes as the earth revolves around the sun the overhead sun keeps shifting between the tropics due to this the amount of sunlight received by different places on earth keeps on changing these changes are responsible for the change in seasons there are four positions of the earth which can be associated with the shifting of the sun in sky the seasons change gradually between these four positions equinoxes the term equinox means equal days if you observe the diagram closely you can notice 21st march and 23rd september the sun is overhead at the equator these are the positions of the equinoxes 21st march is vernal equinox and 23rd september is autumnal equinox 21st march the northern hemisphere experiences spring season while the southern hemisphere is experiencing autumn in on 23rd september the northern hemisphere is experiencing autumn while the southern hemisphere is experiencing spring during these two positions the sun rays fall vertically on the equator neither the northern hemisphere nor the southern hemisphere is tilted towards or away from the sun both the hemisphere receive equal sunlight and experience days and nights of equal length the circle of illumination coincides with the longitudes the northern hemisphere experiences spring season on 21st march and autumn on 23rd september the southern hemisphere experiences autumn on 21st march and spring on 23rd september solstice the term solstice means sun standing still during a solstice the sun shines overhead on one of the tropics this is the day when the sun finishes its northward or southward journey and then goes back during a solstice one of the hemisphere is tilted towards the sun while the other tilted away from the sun the hemisphere which is tilted towards the sun experience longer days while the hemisphere which is tilted away from the sun will experience shorter days than night the diagram here shows the position of earth during summer solstice if you observe the overhead sun is on tropic of cancer northern hemisphere is receiving more sunlight than southern hemisphere the days are longer then the nights in northern hemisphere while in southern hemisphere the days are shorter and the nights are longer here the northern hemisphere is experiencing summer while the southern hemisphere is experiencing winter this is winter solstice during this position the overhead sun is on tropic of capricorn the days in southern hemisphere are longer than 
the nights while in northern hemisphere the days are shorter than the nights places near south pole are experiencing 24 hours of daylight while the places near north pole are experiencing 24 hours of darkness this was all for this session in the next session we will focus on the next chapter don't forget to watch thank you